Old French Francis, Francois, Romance, Modern French, Ancien Francais was the language spoken in northern France from the 8th century to the 14th century. In the 14th century, these dialects came to be collectively known as the Langue d'Oil, contrasting with the Langue d'Oc or Occitan language in the south of France. The mid 14th century is taken as the transitional period to Middle French, the language of the French Renaissance, specifically based on the dialect of the Isle de France region. The place and area where Old French was spoken natively roughly extended to the northern half of the Kingdom of France and its vassals including parts of the Angevin Empire, which during the 12th century remained under Anglo-Norman rule, and the duchies of Upper and Lower Lorraine to the east corresponding to modern northeastern France and Belgian Wallonia, but the influence of Old French was much wider, as it was carried to England and the Crusader states as the language of a feudal elite and of commerce. Topic: Aerial and dialectal divisions. The aerial of Old French in contemporary terms corresponded to the northern parts of the Kingdom of France, including Anjou and Normandy, which in the 12th century were ruled by the Plantagenet kings of England, Upper Burgundy, and the Duchy of Lorraine. The Norman dialect was also spread to England and Ireland, and during the Crusades, Old French was also spoken in the Kingdom of Sicily, and in the Principality of Antioch and the Kingdom of Jerusalem in the Levant. As part of the emerging Gallo-Romance dialect continuum, the Langs d'Oil were contrasted with the Languedoc, the emerging Occitano-Romance group, at the time also called Provençal, adjacent to the Old French area in the southwest, and with the Gallo-Italic group to the southeast. The Franco-Provençal group developed in Upper Burgundy, sharing features with both French and Provençal. It may have begun to diverge from the Langue d'Oil as early as the 9th century, and is attested as a distinct Gallo-Romance variety by the 12th century. Dialects or variants of Old French included Burgundian in Burgundy, then an independent duchy whose capital was at Dijon, Picard of Picardy, whose principal cities were Calais and Lille. It was said that the Picard language began at the east door of Notre Dame de Paris, so far reaching was its influence. Old Norman, in Normandy, whose principal cities were Conn and Rouen. The Norman conquest of England brought many Norman speaking aristocrats into the British Isles. Most of the older Norman, sometimes called French, words in English reflect its influence, which became a conduit for the introduction into the Anglo-Norman realm, as did Anglo-Norman control of Anjou and Gascony and other continental possessions. Anglo-Norman was a language that reflected a shared culture on both sides of the English Channel. Ultimately, the language declined and fell, becoming Law French, a jargon spoken by lawyers that was used in English law until the reign of Charles II of England. However, the Norman language still survives in Normandy and the Channel Islands as a regional language. Wallon, around Namur, now in Wallonia, Belgium. Gallo of the Duchy of Brittany. Lorraine of the Duchy of Lorraine. Some modern languages are derived from Old French dialects other than Classical French, which is based on the Isle de France dialect. They include Angevin, Berrichon, Bourguignon Morvadiae, Champenois, Franc Comtois, Gallo, Lorraine, Norman, Picard, Poitevin, saint ingiais and Walloon. History Evolution from Vulgar Latin Beginning with Plautus's time 254 to 184 BC, one can see phonological changes between Classical Latin and what is called Vulgar Latin, the common spoken language of the Western Roman Empire. Vulgar Latin differed from Classical Latin in phonology and morphology as well as exhibiting lexical differences, however, they were mutually intelligible until the 7th century when Classical Latin died as a daily spoken language, and had to be learned as a second language though it was long thought of as the formal version of the spoken language. Vulgar Latin was the ancestor of the Romance languages, including Old French. Non-Latin influences Gaulish 
Some Gaulish words influenced Vulgar Latin and, through this, other Romance languages. For example, classical Latin equus was uniformly replaced in Vulgar Latin by caballus, nag, work horse, derived from Gaulish caballos, cf, Welsh cephil, Breton kefil, giving modern French cheval, Occitan caval, chaval, Catalan caval, Spanish caballo, Portuguese cavallo, Italian cavallo, Romanian cal, and, by extension, English cavalry. An estimated 200 words of Gaulish etymology survive in modern French, for example chen oak tree and charu plough. .Within historical phonology and studies of language contact, various phonological changes have been posited as caused by a Gaulish substrate, although there is some debate. One of these is considered certain, because this fact is clearly attested in the Gaulish language epigraphy on the pottery found at Le Grofersink AD 1st century. There, the Greek word parapsides written in Latin appears as paraxidei. The consonant clusters, ps, and pt, shifted to xs, and xt, e.g. Latin capsa greater than asterisk caxa greater than kes does not equal Italian casa, or captivis greater than asterisk caxtivis greater than of chatif mod, ketif, cf. Irish cact, servant, does not equal Italian cativita, Portuguese. Cativo. Spanish cortivo. This phonetic evolution is parallel to the shift of the Latin cluster per not. In Old French, Latin factum greater than fet, does not equal Italian fato, Portuguese fato, Spanish hecho, or lactum asterisk greater than lay, does not equal Italian latte, Portuguese light, Spanish leche. The Celtic Gaulish language is thought to have survived into the 6th century in France, despite considerable cultural romanization. Coexisting with Latin, Gaulish helped shape the vulgar Latin dialects that developed into French, with effects including loanwords and calques, including we, the word for yes, sound changes shaped by Gaulish influence, and influences in conjugation and word order. Recent computational studies suggest that early gender shifts may have been motivated by the gender of the corresponding word in Gaulish. Topic. Frankish The pronunciation, vocabulary, and syntax of the Vulgar Latin spoken in Roman Gaul in late antiquity was modified by the Old Frankish language, spoken by the Franks who settled in Gaul from the 5th century and conquered the entire Old French-speaking area by the 530s. The name Francais itself is derived from the name the Franks. The Old Frankish language had a definitive influence on the development of Old French, which partly explains why the earliest attested Old French documents are older than the earliest attestations in other Romance languages e.g. Strasbourg Oaths, sequence of Saint Eulalia. It is the result of an earlier gap created between Classical Latin and its evolved forms, which slowly reduced and eventually severed the intercomprehensibility between the two. The Old Low Franconian influence is also believed to be responsible for the differences between the Lang d'Oil and the Lang d'Oc Occitan, being that various parts of northern France remained bilingual between Latin and Germanic for some time, and these areas correspond precisely to where the first documents in Old French were written. This Germanic language shaped the popular Latin spoken here and gave it a very distinctive identity compared to the other future Romance languages. The very first noticeable influence is the substitution of the Latin melodic accent by a Germanic stress, and its result was diphthongization, differentiation between long and short vowels, the fall of the unaccented syllable and of the final vowels. Latin decimus, a tenth greater than of decimi greater than f dime, tithe greater than e dime, Italian decimo, Spanish diesmo. VL dignitate greater than of daintere greater than e dainty, Italian dignita, Romanian demnitate. VL catena greater than of chain greater than e chain Italian catena cast Occitan cadena Portuguese cadea additionally two phonemes that had long since died out in vulgar latin were reintroduced h and w greater than of g u o n f w c f Picard w VL alto greater than of halt high influenced by olf asterisk o does not equal Italian Portuguese alto Catalan alt old Occitan a u t L Vespa greater than F Gepe, Picard Wepe, Wallen Wessa, all Wasp, influenced by OLF asterisk Wapsa, does not equal Occitan Vespa, Italian Vespa, Spanish A Vespa. 
L viscous greater than F gui mistletoe influenced by OLF asterisk wisila morello with analogous fruits when they are not ripe does not equal occitan vesc Italian viscio LL vulpiculu fox kit from L vulps fox greater than of gulpels Picard wupel fox influenced by OLF asterisk wolf wolf does not equal occitan vulpel old Italian vulpilio Spanish vulpeja vixen in contrast the Italian Portuguese and Spanish words of Germanic origin borrowed from French or directly from Germanic retain GW approximately per gram e.g. it SP guerra war alongside per gram in French guerre these examples show a clear consequence of bilingualism, that sometimes even changed the first syllable of the Latin words. One example of a Latin word influencing an old Low Franconian loan is framus raspberry, from a frambesha, from olf asterisk brambisi blackberry cf, Dutch brambies, brambisi, akin to German brombeer, English dial, bramberry blended with ll fraga or of fray strawberry, which explains the replacement b greater than f and in turn the final she of framus added to a fray to make freeze, modern phrase does not equal wallen freve, occitan fraga, Romanian fraga, Italian fragola, fra Vola, strawberry, Pope 1934, estimated that perhaps still 15% of the vocabulary of modern French derives from Germanic sources while the proportion was larger in Old French, because the French language borrowed heavily from Latin and Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Earliest written Old French At the Third Council of Tours in 813, priests were ordered to preach in the vernacular language either Romance or Germanic, since the common people could no longer understand formal Latin. The earliest documents said to be written in the Gallo-Romance that prefigures French, after the Reichenau and Castle glosses 8th and 9th centuries are the Oaths of Strasbourg treaties and charters into which King Charles the Bald entered in 842. Pro Dio Amore pro Christian Poblo e nostro commune salvament, dist dien avant, in quant deus savir e podir me dunat, si salvario sist me on fradra carlo, e in euda e in caduna cosa. For the love of God and for the Christian people, and our common salvation, from this day forward, as God will give me the knowledge and the power, I will defend my brother Charles with my help in everything. The second oldest document in Old French is the Eulalia sequence, which is important for linguistic reconstruction of Old French pronunciation due to its consistent spelling. The Royal House of Capet, founded by Hugh Capet in 987, inaugurated the development of Northern French culture in and around Isle de France, which slowly but firmly asserted its ascendancy over the more southerly areas of Aquitaine and Toulouse. Toulouse. However, the Capetians' langue d'oil, the forerunner of modern standard French, did not begin to become the common speech of all of France until after the French Revolution. Transition to Middle French In the late Middle Ages, the Old French dialects diverged into a number of distinct langues d'oil, among which Middle French proper was the dialect of the Isle de France region. During the early modern period, French was established as the official language of the Kingdom of France throughout the realm, including the Languedoc-speaking territories in the south. It was only in the 17th to 18th centuries, with the development especially of popular literature of the Bibliothèque Bleue, that a standardized classical French spread throughout France alongside the regional dialects. <laughs> <laughs> literature The material and cultural conditions in France and associated territories around the year 1100 triggered what Charles Homer Haskins termed the «Renaissance of the 12th century», resulting in a profusion of creative works in a variety of genres. Old French gave way to Middle French in the mid-14th century, paving the way for early French Renaissance literature of the 15th century. The earliest extant French literary texts date from the 9th century, but very few texts before the 11th century have survived. The first literary works written in Old French were Saints' Lives. The Canticle of Saint Eulalie, written in the second half of the 9th century, is generally accepted as the first such text. 
At the beginning of the 13th century, Jean Baudel, in his Chanson de Seine, divided medieval French narrative literature into three subject areas, the matter of France or matter of Charlemagne, the matter of Rome romances in an ancient setting, and the matter of Britain Arthurian romances and Breton lice. The first of these is the subject area of the Chansons de Gesta, songs of exploits, or songs of heroic deeds. Epic poems typically composed in ten-syllable assonanced occasionally rhymed lessers. More than 100 chansons de gesta have survived in around 300 manuscripts. The oldest and most celebrated of the chansons de gesta is the Song of Roland earliest version composed in the late 11th century. Bertrand de Barsouroba in his Gerard de Vienne set out a grouping of the chansons de Gesta into three cycles, the Gesta du Roi centering on Charlemagne, the Gesta de Garin de Monglaine whose central character was William of Orange, and the Gesta de Dune de Mayence or the «Rebel Vassal Cycle», the most famous characters of which were Renaud de Montauban and Gerard de Roussillon. A fourth grouping, not listed by Bertrand, is the Crusade Cycle, dealing with the First Crusade and its immediate aftermath. Jean Baudel's other two categories the Matter of Rome and the Matter of Britain concern the French Romance or Roman. Around a hundred verse romances survive from the period 1150 to 1220. From around 1200 on, the tendency was increasingly to write the romances in prose. Many of the earlier verse romances were adapted into prose versions, although new verse romances continued to be written to the end of the 14th century. The most important romance of the 13th century is the Romance of the Rose, which breaks considerably from the conventions of the chivalric adventure story. Medieval French lyric poetry was indebted to the poetic and cultural traditions in southern France and Provence including Toulouse, Poitiers, and the Aquitaine region, where Languedoc was spoken Occitan language. In their turn, the Provençal poets were greatly influenced by poetic traditions from the Hispano-Arab world. The Occitan or Provençal poets were called troubadours, from the word troubar, to find, to invent. Lyric poets in Old French are called trouviers. By the late 13th century, the poetic tradition in France had begun to develop in ways that differed significantly from the troubadour poets, both in content and in the use of certain fixed forms. The new poetic, as well as musical, some of the earliest medieval music has lyrics composed in Old French by the earliest composers known by name. Tendencies are apparent in the Roman de Forville in 1310 and 1314, a satire on abuses in the medieval church, filled with medieval motets, lice, rondo, and other new secular forms of poetry and music, mostly anonymous, but with several pieces by Philippe de Vitry, who would coin the expression Ars Nova to distinguish the new musical practice from the music of the immediate immediately preceding age. The best-known poet and composer of Ars Nova secular music and chansons of the incipient Middle French period was Guillaume de Macau. Discussions about the origins of non-religious theatre profane, both drama and farce, in the Middle Ages remain controversial, but the idea of a continuous popular tradition stemming from Latin comedy and tragedy to the 9th century seems unlikely. Most historians place the origin of medieval drama in the church's liturgical dialogues and tropes. Mystery plays were eventually transferred from the monastery church to the chapter house or refectory hall and finally to the open air, and the vernacular was substituted for Latin. In the 12th century one finds the earliest extant passages in French appearing as refrains inserted into liturgical dramas in Latin, such as a Saint Nicholas patron saint of the student clerks play and a Saint Stephen play. An early French dramatic play is Le Jeu de Dame c. 1150, written in octosyllabic rhymed couplets with Latin stage directions, implying that it was written by Latin-speaking clerics for a lay public. A large body of fables survive in Old French, these include, mostly anonymous, literature dealing with the recurring trickster character of Reynard the Fox. Marie de France was also active in this genre, producing the Aesopit, Little Aesop, series of fables in verse. Related to the fable was the more bawdy fabliae, which covered topics such as cuckolding and corrupt clergy. These fabliaux would be an important source for Chaucer and for the Renaissance short story, Conte or Nouvelle. Topic. Phonology 
Old French was constantly changing and evolving, however, the form in the late 12th century, as attested in a great deal of mostly poetic writings, can be considered standard. The writing system at this time was more phonetic than that used in most subsequent centuries. In particular, all written consonants including final ones were pronounced, except for s preceding non-stop consonants and t in a, and final e was pronounced. The phonological system can be summarized as follows. Topic: Consonants. Notes: All obstruents, plosives, fricatives, and affricates were subject to word-final devoicing, which was usually indicated in the orthography. The affricates t s, d z, t d became fricatives s, z, in Middle French. T S had three spellings: C before E or I, C before other vowels, or Z at the end of a word, as seen in cent, chanson, pris, a hundred, song, price. D Z was written as Z, as in dose, twelve, and did not occur word initially. L morile, as in conseil, travailler, advice to work, became J in modern French appeared not only in the middle of a word, but also at the end, as in poing, fist, at the end of a word, was later lost, leaving a nasalized vowel. H, was found only in Germanic loanwords and was later lost, although it is transphonologized as the so-called aspirated H that blocks liaison. In native Latin words, H, was lost early on, as in om, uem, from Latin homo. Intervocalic d from both Latin t and d was lenited to in the early period cf contemporary Spanish amado amau at the end of words it was also devoiced to theta in some texts it was sometimes written as dh or th auda caduna luda vid by 1100 it disappeared altogether topic <laughs> vowels In Old French, the nasal vowels were not separate phonemes but only allophones of the oral vowels before a nasal consonant. The nasal consonant was fully pronounced, bon was pronounced bon modern French b. nasal vowels were present even in open syllables before nasals where modern French has oral vowels, as in bone bon modern French bon bn. Monophthongs. <laughs> 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 Notes O had formerly existed but then closed to U, the original Western Romance, U, having previously been fronted to Y, across most of what is now France and northern Italy. O would later appear again when or monophthongized and also when closed in certain positions, such as when it was followed by original S or Z, but not by TS, which later became S. O may have similarly become closed to u in at least in some dialects, since it was borrowed into Middle English as un greater than an Latin computare greater than of conta greater than English count Latin rotundum greater than of ronc greater than English round Latin bonitatum greater than of bonte greater than English bounty. In any case, traces of such a change were erased in later stages of French when the close nasal vowels i y o tilde tilde were opened to become may have existed in the unstressed third-person plural verb ending ent, but it may have already passed to which is known to have happened no later than the Middle French period. Diphthongs and triphthongs Notes in early Old French up to about the mid 12th century, the spelling I represented a diphthong, aj, instead of the later monophthong, and a represented the diphthong ej, which merged with oj in late Old French, except when it was nasalized. In early Old French, the diphthongs described above as rising may have been falling diphthongs, i.e., yj, u. In earlier works with vowel assonance, the diphthong written i.e. did not assonate with any pure vowels, which suggests that it cannot have simply been j. The pronunciation of the vowels written u and u is debated. In the first records of early Old French, they represented and were written as u o o, and by Middle French, they had both merged as o tilde o e, but the transitional pronunciations are unclear. 
Early Old French had additional triphthongs, i.e. j, and uoj, equivalent to diphthongs followed by j, these soon merged into i, and i, respectively. The diphthong u was rare and had merged into ui by Middle French of tiul greater than mf tuil tile, of siur greater than late of suir greater than mf suivre follow. Topic hiatus. In addition to diphthongs, Old French had many instances of hiatus between adjacent vowels because of the loss of an intervening consonant. Manuscripts generally do not distinguish hiatus from true diphthongs, but modern scholarly transcription indicates it with a diaresis, as in modern French. Latin ordire greater than of or uir here modern weir. Vulgar Latin asterisk veduta greater than of voya, vy. Scene modern view. Latin reginum greater than of rain, r in, queen modern rain. Latin pagensum greater than of pais, pa is, country modern pays. Latin augustum greater than of oust, a u s t, august modern out. Latin patellum greater than of pael, par l, pan modern poel. Late Latin quaternum greater than of kia, qua je, booklet, quia, modern cahir. Late Latin ataticum greater than of aage, eage, or ad, tilde, ad, age, modern age. Topic Grammar Topic nouns Old French maintained a two-case system, with a nominative case and an oblique case, for longer than some other Romance languages like Spanish and Italian did. Case distinctions, at least in the masculine gender, were marked on both the definite article and the noun itself. Thus, the masculine noun Lee Vaisons the neighbor, Latin Bacinus, WKNS, greater than Proto Western Romance asterisk Vecinos, VET Sinos, greater than of Vaisons, VEJ Zins, modern French La Voisin, VWAZ, was declined as follows. In later Old French, the distinctions had become moribund. As in most other Romance languages, it was the oblique case form that usually survived to become the modern French form. L'enfant, the child, represents the old oblique, Latin accusative infantum. The old French nominative was li enfesh, Latin enfans. There are some cases with significant differences between nominative and oblique forms derived from Latin nouns with a stress shift between the nominative and other cases, in which either it is the nominative form that survives or both forms survive with different meanings, both OFR li sire, le sire, Latin seior, seiorum, and le sina, nom. Sendra, Latin senior, seniorum, survive in the vocabulary of later French, sire, sire, seigneur, as different ways to refer to a feudal lord. Modern French sir, sister, is the nominative form, Old French sewer, modern French preta, priest, is the nominative form, Old French prestra, modern French indefinite pronoun on, one, continues Old French nominative hom, man, man, continues the oblique form, of home, son, wire. In this case, a later spelling pronunciation has resulted in the modern pronunciation, fizz, earlier, phi. As in Spanish and Italian, the neuter gender was eliminated, and most old neuter nouns became masculine. Some Latin neuter plurals were reanalyzed as feminine singulars. Latin gordium was more widely used in the plural form gordia, which was taken for a singular in vulgar Latin and ultimately led to modern French la joie, joy, feminine singular. Nouns were declined in the following declensions. Class I is derived from the Latin first declension. Class Ia mostly comes from Latin feminine nouns in the third declension. Class II is derived from the Latin second declension. Class I -er generally stems from second declension nouns ending in er and from third declension masculine nouns. In both cases, the Latin nominative singular did not end in s, which is preserved in Old French. The classes show various analogical developments, s from the accusative instead of e after a consonant cluster, in class 1 nominative plural, Latin air, li peri instead of asterisk li peres, Latin ili patris, in class i a nominative plural, modeled on class 2, etc. Class 3 nouns show a separate form in the nominative singular that does not occur in any of the other forms. I ear nouns ended in a tor, a torum in Latin and preserved the stress shift. IIIB nouns also had a stress shift, from O to Onum. IIIC nouns are an old French creation and have no clear Latin antecedent. 
IIID nouns represent various other types of third declension Latin nouns with stress shift or a change of consonant soror, sororum, infans, infantum, presbyter, presbyterum, seior, seiorum, comes, comitum. Regular feminine forms of masculine nouns are formed by adding an e to the masculine stem unless the masculine stem already ends in e. For example, berger shepherd becomes berger, modern French berger and berger. Topic adjectives Adjectives agree in terms of number, gender and case with the noun that they are qualifying. Thus, a feminine plural noun in the nominative case requires any qualifying adjectives to be feminine, plural and nominative. For example, in fever's riches, riche has to be in the feminine plural form. Adjectives can be divided into three declensional classes, class 1 corresponding roughly to Latin first and second declension adjectives, class 2 corresponding roughly to Latin third declension adjectives, class 3 containing primarily the descendants of Latin synthetic comparative forms in ior, eorum, class 1 adjectives have a feminine singular form, nominative and oblique, ending in e. They can be further subdivided into two subclasses, based on the masculine nominative singular form. Class E adjectives have a masculine nominative singular ending in s, bon, good, modern French bon. For class IV adjectives, the masculine nominative singular ends in e, like the feminine. There are descendants of Latin second and third declension adjectives ending in er in the nominative singular, aspre, harsh, modern French apre. For class II adjectives, the feminine singular is not marked by the ending e, grands, big, great. Modern French grand, an important subgroup of class II adjectives is the present participial forms in ant. Class III adjectives have a stem alternation, resulting from stress shift in the Latin third declension and a distinct neuter form, meadre, better, modern French maya, in later Old French, classes II and III tended to be moved across to class I, which was complete by Middle French. Modern French thus has only a single adjective declension, unlike most other Romance languages, which have two or more. Topic verbs Verbs in Old French show the same extreme phonological deformations as other Old French words, however, morphologically, Old French verbs are extremely conservative in preserving intact most of the Latin alternations and irregularities that had been inherited in Proto-Romance. Old French has much less analogical reformation than modern French has and significantly less than the oldest stages of other languages, such as Old Spanish, despite the fact that the various phonological developments in Gallo-Romance and Proto-French led to complex alternations in the majority of commonly used verbs. For example, the Old French verb lava, to wash, Latin lavare, is conjugated je left two leaves, il leave in the present indicative and je left two les, il let in the present subjunctive. In both cases regular phonological developments from Latin indicative lavo, lavas, lavit and subjunctive lavum, laves, lavit. The following paradigm is typical in showing the phonologically regular but morphologically irregular alternations of most paradigms. The alternation je left tilde two leaves is a regular result of the final devoicing triggered by loss of final o, but not a. The alternation lava tilde two leaves is a regular result of the diphthongization of a stressed open syllable, a, into, er, greater than, er, greater than, e. The alternation je left tilde two les tilde il let in the subjunctive is a regular result of the simplification of the final clusters fs and per foot, resulting from loss of e in final syllables. Modern French, on the other hand, has je lave two laves il lave in both indicative and subjunctive, reflecting significant analogical developments. Analogical borrowing of unstressed vowel a, analogical e in the first singular from verbs like jontre with a regular e, and wholesale replacement of the subjunctive with forms modeled on IR, OIR, reverbs. All serve to eliminate the various alternations in the Old French verb paradigm. Even modern irregular verbs are not immune from analogy, for example, Old French je vif, tu vis, il vi, vivre, to live, has yielded to modern je vis, tu vis, il vi, eliminating the unpredictable f in the first person singular. The simple past also shows extensive analogical reformation and simplification in modern French, as compared with Old French. The Latin pluperfect was preserved in very early Old French as a past tense with a value similar to a preterite or imperfect. 
For example, the sequence of Saint Eulalia 878 AD, has past tense forms such as avre, simple past. Old Occitan also preserved this tense, with a conditional value. Spanish still preserves this tense, the ra imperfect subjunctive, as does Portuguese, in its original value as a pluperfect indicative. Topic verb alternations in Latin, stress was determined automatically by the number of syllables in a word and the weight length, of the syllables. That resulted in certain automatic stress shifts between related forms in a paradigm, depending on the nature of the suffixes added. For example, in penso, I think, the first syllable was stressed, but in pensimus, we think, the second syllable was stressed. In many Romance languages, vowels diphthongized in stressed syllables under certain circumstances but not in unstressed syllables, resulting in alternations in verb paradigms, Spanish pienso, I think, versus pensamos, we think, pensa, to think, or cuento, I tell, versus contamos, we tell, contar, to tell. In the development of French, at least five vowels diphthongized in stressed, open syllables. Combined with other stress-dependent developments, that yielded 15 or so types of alternations in so-called strong verbs in Old French. For example, a, diphthongized to, i, before nasal stops in stressed, open syllables but not in unstressed syllables, yielding aim, I love, Latin amo, but amens, we love, Latin amamus. The different types are as follows, in modern French, the verbs in the er class have been systematically leveled. Generally, the weak, unstressed form predominates, but there are some exceptions, such as modern aimer, now Simons. The only remaining alternations are in verbs like akata, jacheti, and jeta, jajet, with unstressed alternating with stressed and in largely learned verbs like adera, jidhir, with unstressed e, alternating with stressed. Many of the non-er verbs have become obsolete, and many of the remaining verbs have been leveled, however, a few alternations remain in what are now known as irregular verbs, such as je tiens, naus tenens, je dois, naus devens and je mers, naus morens. Some verbs had a more irregular alternation between different length stems, with a longer, stressed stem alternating with a shorter, unstressed stem. That was a regular development stemming from the loss of unstressed intertonic vowels, which remained when they were stressed. J, adia, help, j, arison, arisnia, speak to, je, de raison, de rainier, argue, je, disjun, disna, dine, je, manju, mangia, eat, je, parole, parla, speak, western romance, disjejunaire, greater than, dije nair, preliminary intertonic loss, greater than, desi nair, trifthong reduction, greater than, disi nair, metaphony, greater than, dis ner, further intertonic loss and other Proto-French developments. Both stems have become full verbs in modern French, déjeuna to have lunch and diner to dine. Furthermore, déjeuna does not derive directly from je disjun to fast. I fast. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Example of regular air verb dura to last. Non-finite forms. Infinitive, dura Present participle, durant Past participle, de auxiliary verb, avoir Topic. Example of regular IR verb, fenir, to end Non-finite forms Infinitive, fenir Present participle, fenison Past participle, feni, t, auxiliary verb, avoir. Topic. Example of regular re verb, core, to run. Non finite forms, infinitive, core, present participle, courant, past participle, coru, t, auxiliary verb, estra. Topic. Examples of auxiliary verbs Topic. Avoir, to have Non-finite forms Infinitive, avoir, earlier of air Present participle, iant Past participle, u, t, auxiliary verb, avoir Topic. Estra, to be. Non-finite forms Infinitive, estra 
Present participle, estant Past participle, este t auxiliary verb, avoir Topic: Other parts of speech Adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions and interjections are generally invariable, one notable exception being the adverb tot, like modern French tout, all, every. See also Influence of French on English Barcher's Law Anglo-Norman literature History of French History of the English language Languages of France